Welcome. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Combining Jupyter Notebooks and OpenLCA. My name is Julian Rickert, and I work as a consultant at Green Delta. And my work focuses on LCA and new methods and tools and how to do lifecycle assessment a bit more efficiently. I'm an industrial engineer by education and I have been working at the cross-section of lifecycle assessment and research for the past three years. Today, I want to show how Green Delta's software OpenLCA can be combined with um, Jupyter Notebooks. For this, I will shortly introduce OpenLCA and Jupyter Notebooks and uh, present three ways of combining Jupyter Notebooks and OpenLCA. To showcase this, I will give a quick live demo and I would like to conclude with answering your questions or having a short discussion. So, starting right off, OpenLCA, I think most of you guys probably know it. So OpenLCA is a free and open source software for lifecycle assessment and lifecycle sustainability assessment and it's developed by Green Delta. It can be downloaded for free and it's a very widely used LCA software uh, with a growing number of users globally. Our aim is to develop software that is more flexible and more powerful than commercial LCA software and yet easy to use. So the entry barrier should be quite low. I think everybody can start and uh, start easily. Also, our aim is uh, to enable you to model close to reality and in line with the lifecycle assessment methodology. OpenLCA Open comes with a lot of flexibility and ease of use. So you can download a lot of databases um, from Nexus. And those are LCA databases, input-output databases, and further databases. So in total, we have about 180,000 different data sets and the number is growing. A few features of OpenLCA um, processes can have main product and on output and input side. Processes are distinguished from products, so those are different objects. And uh, product systems are, again, different objects and show the model life cycle and can be edited. So you have no hardware supply chains like in other LCA software. Coming right to the second point on the agenda, uh, Jupyter Notebooks. And to introduce Jupyter Notebooks, uh, I think it's best to actually read what their own description is. So it's a web-based interactive computing notebook environment where you can edit and run human readable docs while describing the data analysis. So, um, it's a web-based environment for over 40 languages, uh, including Python, which we, we will be using in this webinar. And to me, it's a bridge between code and explanatory text or figures and videos. So you can run code cell by cell, directly see the output, but also describe what you have done um, with a text or a figure. The notebooks are easily shareable, either in notebook form or as HTML, making your workflow very transparent and uh, reproducible for others. So I use it as a single location for developing, testing and documenting code and also for visualizing data and results. So how can we combine Jupyter Notebooks and OpenLCA? I thought 
of uh, three different modes or three different ways, and I'm going to present all of them. So obviously you can use Jupyter Notebooks and OpenSCA next to each other, but not in a connected way. So you can have um, some data, let's say it's uh, measurement data for your processes, which need data cleaning. And uh, you can use Jupyter Notebooks for this. So you have a transparent, reproducible workflow for your data handling, data preparation, data cleaning. And uh, with this, um, you have all the benefits I just mentioned. So you, it's uh, easily shareable, it's reproducible, and you can do your same um, data handling approach for all measurement files, so to say. So you could use Jupyter for this and then use the resulting output um, as input data in OpenSCA, but you could connect it um, only manually. So you would do your data analysis on Jupyter Notebooks and then just use the results and model in OpenSCA. But I think there are actually also other ways. So, for example, using Jupyter Notebooks for automation in OpenLCA via the um, Olka IPC RP. And what is this? So, OpenLCA provides uh, a JSON RPC based uh, protocol for inter process communication. That's what IPC stands for. And with this, it is possible to call functions in OpenLCA and create a transparent and re reproducible workflow again. So you could create and link objects in uh, OpenLCA. So you could create flows, processes, or product systems. You can run calculations. So you can run a simple LCA calculation, or you uh, could also run Monte Carlo simulations. And third, you can reparameterize product systems. Basically, you can call most of the functions which are available in OpenLCA through the um, OpenLCA IPC. And um, this is very handy for auto automation. So say you want to create a very large number of new flows or a very large number of new processes. Um, for these tasks, I would advise uh, to use um, Jupyter Notebooks and automate this. But I think there's, again, oh, so I have a comment. Increase the mic volume. Um, I hope that you can hear me now uh, better. And I'm just going to speak to the mic directly from now on. I think the third and probably most efficient way of combining Jupyter Notebooks and OpenACA is having a full uh, circle, so to say. So you start in Jupyter Notebooks and uh, write some code for your um, approach or for your automation purposes and um, use OpenACA only as data storage and calculation engine. And then the output uh, you can use again in Jupyter and uh, make use of the Python ecosystem. So on this page we have um, written that you can make use of NumPy, Pandas and other libraries. And I think that is very handy, especially um, when you have very large product systems and a lot of uh, results, maybe stemming from Monte Carlo simulations, um, handling this kind of data and um, making beautiful visualizations can be quite easy and uh, convenient through uh, Jupyter Notebooks and the concerning Python libraries. 
So, coming uh, to the main part of our um, webinar today, um, the live demo. I um, want to showcase how to import um, data from a scientific paper. Uh, you can see it here, it's uh, from 2009, it doesn't really matter, um, it's just an example. And um, for this, um, first of all, <coughs> I will start Jupyter Notebooks. So this is how this is Anaconda Navigator. This is the environment I run Jupyter Notebooks in. And you start notebooks easily just by clicking on launch here. I already did that, so this is how Jupyter Notebooks looks like. And this is the prepared notebook um, I want to showcase today. So what is really nice in notebooks, as you can see here, you have the option of implementing or uh, embedding some uh, figures or some pictures here, then having some text, and here's some code. And uh, you can also use uh, notebook extensions for, for stuff like this, so you can see the contents. And what this uh, notebook will do is I will import data from an Excel file, I will create new OpenLCA objects and link the data. Then I will do some simple calculations and I will do some, let's say, more advanced calculations. Okay, first of all, I, we need to establish the connection to OpenLCA. We do this so with, well, having an active database, you go to Tools, Developer Tools, and IPC Server, and say OK. And now, coming to the notebook. So, the first line, or the first cell is just the startup. Um, I import some Python libraries, um, and I also establish the connection to OpenSCA. So the connection is established now. Uh, just as a reminder, this is the paper uh, we are going to import um, data from. What I have done here actually, and uh, just to showcase how nice Jupyter Notes can be, so you can actually uh, embed a, a PDF here. Um, what I did, as uh, for easier importing, I create an Excel file where I have all the flows. And also all the new processes with some uh, description and the amounts of the flows. I do this via Excel. Um, so I created this small Excel tool. Um, but uh, which is a bit more sophisticated, so you can search in it. For example, if you search for steel, you have the option to find corresponding flows and uh, IDs, but uh, it's, it's just, yeah, uh, more of a little bit sophisticated. Excel tool, you can you don't have to use the search functions. You can basically use every Excel, uh, or very si very simple Excel. So this will be the Excel file we are going to import. Then I will do some uh, operations on it, on them. Um, let's do it. What you can see now here is a, I created a data frame object. 
with all the important um, information from the EXE file. Uh, this will look like gibberish to you, probably. Um, you don't have to mind that. So it's basically what I just put in this Excel, it's all the flow information and the name of the processes and amounts. So um, the next big step is creating new LC, open LCA objects and linking the data. So I have to find the corresponding flows and if those flows are not in the database I'm currently using, I have to create new flows. So I wrote one cell which does this um, and I'm going to execute it now. What we get as a result or output is a list of important imported flows. And just to show it to you, I'm going to switch to OpenLCA and reload my database. And here you can see those flows which I which were newly created. For example, it's uh, it's rapeseed from Taiwan from this case study from the scientific paper. And uh, what I did is I, I added a small description saying that I imported this flow through the IPC. I also uh, used the timestamp option of Python and I uh, used some code to um, put the name of the file which I used as, as an input into uh, the description. Since I uh, changed databases in between, I have to establish uh, or re-establish the connection to the IPC server. So I will just do that and go back to the notebook file. Now we have imported all the flows or created new flows, but um, those are just flow objects and not exchange objects in the database yet. So we have to actually create exchange objects of all flows which are not zero. And I'm going to do this right now. And what you can see now is you get back um, a list of or at least six exchange lists. So let's take the last one. So this is the process and it has those in and outputs. Um, so and these amounts and units. So the exchanges are created automatically with this code. And uh, we create, can create new processes which take these lists of exchanges. So with this cell we have created six new processes and wrote them into our database. Let's have a look. Again, I need to reload the database. And now you can see here, bioethanol production was created, just as I wanted. So I have um, some description came with it. Um, I included the DOI from the paper, again, put a timestamp in the description and the import file where this all stems from. You can um, also uh, yeah, give uh, some time information with it. I did not uh, define this in the Excel, but it's easily possible. Uh, ge the geography is also imported correctly. And what you see here, all the flows with the correct um, amounts are imported. Yeah, so that seemed to work fine. So again, I have to reestablish the uh, connection to the IPC server. And what I'm going to do now is um, to ask 
OpenLCA for a list of all processes which are currently in the database. And within a second you get a list. And what you see here, we have over 19,000 processes in this particular database. And you see those last six processes and the unique ID were the processes we created uh, with the last cell. And now I just want to search this data frame and I use a search string. I, so I just want to find all the processes which have biodiesel production in the name. So I get back only two processes, I, but I just want to have the IDs. And with this list of IDs, I can create product systems in OpenSA with this cell. So let's do this. And this will probably take a minute or two and we can see what OpenSA does. So if it's working in the background, so I'm gonna switch again back to OpenSA and you can see here in the console that um, yeah, the operations are in progress. So I think probably the first um, product system has already been created. And since we are doing it for two product systems, I think we just have to wait a little bit more. Oh no, actually we are, we are all good. So we created um, two product systems and uh, we can do uh, some simple LCA calculations, so just a static LCA. And we can say we want, uh, we can define the calculation type, so we want to have the complete product system analyzed, so upstream analysis. Uh, we can define the amount we want to um, analyze. We can define the impact assessment methodology. Uh, we will use IPCC. And we'll do this for the list of product systems for both. So let's do this. I'm sorry, and probably this will take a minute or two. So the calculation of, of course, takes a little bit longer than just the creation. So let's have a look. Open LCA is working in the background. So maybe this is a very good moment in time. If you have any questions, please feel free. I have, uh, I can see um, your comments on YouTube. So if you have any questions, please feel free to just ask. So the first product system has already, already been calculated. And the second is going to get calculated now. And soon we should have the result. What I'm going to show you are just the final results. But what is really nice is um, th that with this um, with this setup. Um, we use for calculating via the IPC RP is that we get an object um, called calc result. And in this object, you not only have um, the, the value, the, the single value, but you actu actually all the flows are included in here. So um, what I did, I, I said to, the, to my uh, client that it's, it's okay to dispose this element or this object now, but you can also export this object uh, as an Excel and see all the fly, uh, um, all the flows in Excel or save this for 
some other analysis. And I think that comes in very handy. But just for some quick analysis, so now we ha only have um, the results. Ah, I see some questions. So uh, two questions. The first question uh, is if the code will be um, available. And yes, we will make the code available. You can explore it. And uh, to the second question, um, you know you can run everything offline. So you can run Jupyter Notebooks on your um, laptop or on your PC, and you don't need a connection to the internet. And um, so the difference between a process, a process is, um, is a transforming activity, so to say. Let's say um, it takes up inputs and transforms these inputs to a new output. Um, classic activity would be probably uh, steel making or machining. Uh, but other processes include also wastewater treatment or um, transport activities. And flows are those objects which are um, inputs or outputs. And then flows can be differentiated between uh, product flows, waste flows, and elementary flows. And product and waste flows are all those flows um, which um, uh, are part of the technosphere, so are uh, human made and can be transformed. Um, and elementary flows are all those flows uh, which belong to the biosphere. So I hope this clarifies this a little bit. And um, so I will come back to the notebook now. Um, so we have um, calculated our two biodiesel um, productions. Now we can plot them and see that um, so the product the product system which produces biodiesel from rapeseed um, has a, I mean you saw the impact it, it's at 3.8 kilogram CO2 equivalents whereas uh, the other one is a little bit higher but this is just to showcase that you can directly um, yeah plot the, your results in the um, Jupyter Notebook. So if we wanted to have um, do some more advanced calculations, do, for example, do Monte Carlo simulations, where we make use of the underlying uncertainty information. Um, so just as a uh, quick side note, um, I'm currently using EcoInvent, which has uncertainty information already included and we're going to make use of this uh, during the Monte Carlo simulation. Um, so again we create our setup so we say that this is our method, this is our functional unit and uh, we define the calculation type as Monte Carlo simulation and we want to um, do a Monte Carlo simulation for uh, both product systems, so you can actually give here a list of product systems. And um, so just for the sake of demonstration, I will just do a, a demonstration run with two um, iterations. Um, I'm just going to show you now. So the first iteration uh, already calculated. And so this was for the first product system and, and now the iterations for the other product system should come through. Um, yeah, as people who are familiar with Monte Carlo simulations, this sometimes takes a while, um, depending on your PC or other setups. Um, so before this webinar, I created a, 
um, oh, I created a Monte Carlo simulation with some more runs and I put stored the values or results um, in a CSV, which I'm going to read now. <clears throat> and now I'm just gonna, going to uh, print those two uh, results. So I think this is probably quite nice. So what you can see here is I make use of uh, Seaborn as a um, visualization library and I create box plots for two different um, data frames. The first data frame only has the result values from the biodiesel production from soybean in it and the second only from rapeseed. But I um, plotted them side by side and said that they share the y-axis. So, so I think this is a very nice visualization. And finally, um, as a last um, functionality, uh, we can export um, this um, notebook um, as an HTML, which I'm going to do now. I just remember that I have to probably change the name a little bit. So like this. Like this, and then copy the name maybe like this. So what I now did is export the whole um notebook as an HTML file and it's here. So this is an HTML file and it's just opened in the browser and what you can see here is all the code, also the um, PDF, all the information which is included and so we can share this uh, HTML file and also the notebook. So this uh, brings me to the end of the notebook. I can see that we are having um, a f further question. So the question is, um, if we uh, if we are calling the um, uncertainty distributions from OpenLCA, and this is exactly what we are doing. So I did not include any other um, uncertainty information for the Monte Carlo to run on. Um, I hope that answers the question. And um, maybe to elaborate a little bit further, um, of course you can, you don't only have to include the uncertainty information which is already included in EcoInvent. You can always define your processes as you like. So um, remember in the beginning when we defined the processes, um, let's have a look here. You can, of course, always um, include some uncertainty over here. Let's say include a logarithmic normal distribution and then apply this um, and do a recalculation via the uh, Jupyter notebooks or in the software as you like. Um, what I did not include in my um, first Excel to read in. I did not include uncertainty information, but if you want to, you can of course include this as well and then uh, add this to the flow and exchanges. Not to the flow, but to the exchanges. Sorry for this. 
So coming back, actually, um, to uh, to sum up, I think um, with Jupyter and OpenLCA, you have a complete, so to say, pipeline. Um, you can handle raw measurement data in a very reproducible way, then use this data directly and create new objects in OpenSEA, or recalculate existing product systems with updated data, um, or reparameterize your product systems. And after calculation through OpenSEA, you can then handle the impact assessment result data. So you can create plots or create reports just as I did. So a notebook could also um, yeah, be used as, as a report, so to say. And um, I think a very big plus is that you can do this all while having the OpenLCA graphical user interface as a convenience. So you can always go to um, OpenLCA and have a look at the objects you created through um, Jupyter Notebooks and check if it was correct or not. And I think this is actually a big differentiation to other um, software uh, packages that um, OpenLCA has a tested and working graphical user interface. Um, Yes, so this is actually one of the last points I wanted to speak about. Um, just this slide on how to start. Um, obviously, you need a, a Python environment. So I, as you may have seen, I use Anaconda, um, which you can download and use uh, in a personal edition for free. The installation of the OpenLCA IPC is very simple, just via pip with this one line. And then you have to run the IPC server as I showcased a number of times. And um, for information, um, you can use, for example, the documentation, um, which is completely on GitHub. And you see some examples, or you can take the examples from the notebook I created. And well, then there are some traditional or classical sources. Um, you can always ask on Stack Overflow or on Ask Open LCA. So um, this brings me kind of to the end. Um, so I will wait a few seconds more if there are more questions. And then, um, yeah, thank you for tuning in and uh, hope this helps. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask.